What's up everyone? Uh, been a while since I made a video. I've been super busy with work and taking care of Meg and whatnot. But today I thought I'd get out and do a quick test. The other day I ended up uh, having autopilot kick me out because I tried to push it over 90 while autopilot was set. First it gives you a warning and then it throws you out. I'm going to try and replicate that today. I've got the camera up on the tripod so hopefully I get a good view of the dashboard. First time I'm trying this so we'll see how it goes but hopefully it works out. And then I'm going to do some quick math to see how much better autopilot 3.0 is, which I don't have, than 2.5 and how much faster, in theory, that you could go on autopilot. I think it's super interesting that once more and more cars get on the road and have autopilot and are doing really well and better than humans, in theory, speeds should get faster and faster and eventually maybe they'll even change the speed limits. But I'll do that math, share my story with you, and if anybody has an Autopilot 3 car and they wanna test the uh, 90 mile an hour restriction to see if it's any different, give it a test and leave a comment below if it's the same. Well, with this traffic, it's gonna take a while to get out of the city, but still wanna do the test, so this is for you guys. While I was sitting in traffic, I found a good way to make the camera more stable. I extended one of the legs all the way up under the screen and it actually helps keep her still. All right, a little traffic here, but I think this is just the interchange. So once I'm on, I'll see if it goes fast enough. If not, I'll drive for a bit. Does anyone else feel the need to touch the accelerator a little bit when autopilot is trying to change lanes I feel like it makes it does do a better job instead of waiting for it to do it itself all right, first things first max 90 you can keep scrolling all you want it will not go past 90 that guy seems to be moving let's find out not moving fast enough See if I can do it here. Probably not going to be able to. Cruise control will not break. 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. There we go. It took off and made me drive. I wonder if I'm locked out for the drive. I am locked out because I exceeded the speed limit for auto steer. All right, well, my GoPro died, so I am filming this on my phone really quick. Um, I've got autopilot back, as you can see. It just means I had to pull over, put it in park, get it turned back on. Anyway, so I often trust autopilot in the mid 80s. It does a very good job. Do you trust yours? Is there a speed where you aren't comfortable with it anymore? And I've only got autopilot 2.5 hardware. The new autopilot 3 hardware is supposedly 10 times more powerful in terms of frames per second of video that it can process. I'm gonna do the math for you when I get home uh, on what that means. I don't think it means that uh, autopilot's going to be able to steer at 900 miles an hour, but I do think there are some interesting pieces of math you can do to see how much better it might be and what that means for the future of autopilot and the future of autonomous driving. In order to get a better feel for just exactly what is happening with autopilot and, and how fast it can process frames, I built a calculator. We're gonna go through this pretty quickly and I'll reveal pieces as we go, but if you wanna really get into the numbers, just hit pause at the end when it's showing the whole thing. So across the top, I've got miles per hour from 60 to 150. Now, I know once you get up into the 150 range, your efficiency goes to you know, just about zero, but I wanted to show that just for the sake of calculations. Eventually, you know, batteries are gonna get better, efficiencies are gonna get better, and maybe you could actually go that fast. Right below that, I have feet per second, so that's just a quick calculation. 
For Autopilot 2.5, uh, the internet says it processes at 200 frames per second. There's eight cameras, so that's essentially 25 uh, frames per second per camera, assuming it's giving priority to <clears throat> all the cameras at the same speed. And this also does not assume any processing power for the radar, for the ultrasonic sensors and everything else. For the sake of these calculations, let's just assume that that's coming from a different processor. So if we start going across at 60 miles an hour, that's essentially it's processing all the cameras a frame every three and a half feet. So that's actually not too bad, right? So it's making a decision every three and a half feet you go. As you start to move up to 90, where it, uh, it starts to get mad, it's just a little over five feet per frame that it processes. Not sure how to really overinterpret that, but uh, you know, every five feet, yeah, I want it making decisions at that or faster. So I'm glad autopilot is limited to 90. Now, if you go up to 150, just as a reference point, it's making a decision every 8.8 .8 feet. That seems uh, way too far for me, right? So every 10 feet or, you know, roughly one and three quarters length of the car or something, uh, it's making a decision that's slow. The second line here is autopilot 3.0, or my estimation thereof. The internet says it can do 2,000 frames a second with full redundancy, so each processor is doing 2,000 frames a second, and then it's basically checking the decision of each processor against the other one before doing anything. So dividing that by eight cameras, that's 250 frames per camera per second. So, you know, the math is actually super easy here. It's 10 times the feet per frame that we saw with Autopilot 2.5. Now, as I said earlier, I don't think that in theory, the Autopilot 3 hardware is capable of running up to 900 miles an hour. I think what they're doing is actually making Autopilot 3.0 better and doing more processing per frame, checking for things like street signs, stop signs, other you know, blinkers on other cars, that kind of thing, where it might be processing each frame multiple times. So what I've done just for a reference point, I've put two times processing, three times processing, and four times processing per frame just to get a reference point. Based on the way Autopilot works today, I don't think they need to process each frame four times more than they do today. So it's probably somewhere between the two and four. So let's just use three as the reference point. Again, you could go up to 150 miles an hour plus without having any challenges in terms of the processing power of the computer. So if we look at just the bottom line now, the 4x processing per frame, maybe this is what it'll turn out to be. But if that's actually the case, even then you could go 120 miles an hour, still have the same, or even better, excuse me, ability to drive as they do today. So I'm sure this will get some reactions, but as autopilot gets better and better and as more and more cars have autopilot either from tesla or from somewhere else do we think speed limits are going to change i don't see why not you know give it five or ten years maybe the speed limit goes up by 30 40 or 50 percent what do you think leave a comment below well thanks for watching everyone hope you enjoyed as always if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button hit the like button and if you are using my videos to figure out if you want to buy a new Tesla, check down in the description. And if you make the call to actually get one, use my referral code. Until next time.